Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our today's webinar on MX Fuel. I'm Claude Aufrecht. I'm the training manager for Milwaukee here in Europe. And together I have taken the best support I can get for this training. With me here today is Thorsten Orlik. Hi, guys. Yeah, before we start, we need to check the legal distance here in Germany. Yeah, a Milwaukee tape measure is always... Good support. Where are we then? Ah, one meter fifty, perfect, Thorsten. We, we are can safe. Start. We I are can safe. Start. We can start. Super. Hi guys, welcome to the MX Fuel training. My name is Thorsten Orlik. Thanks for the introduction, Claude. I'm just a little part of a big team of engineers, product managers, researchers who really went to the job sites and looked for solutions and current user frustrations. So MX Fuel is a long work for, of many people developing a solution for our users on the job sites and bringing a breakthrough innovation in cordless technology. But what are these frustrations? We will show you in the next video, which we will play and I will comment. So diamond coring, if we look at the coring express, this is one of the most dangerous machines in the world. If the clutch fails, we face serious injuries by the user kicking off a ladder, for example, or even worse. When we look at demolition hammers, we know the hassle of cords, we know the hassle of hoses, this guy's to maneuver 30 kilos of weight and sometimes even petrol. This brings us to the next point, petrol engines, a lot of parts, sometimes due to the weather conditions, hard to start. And then, if this is not enough, fuel storage, fuel transportation, fuel handling, having the right mix, and then at the end, the emission. So what you see here in this video was original footage from research this team did, I named before, and we really like try to tackle this kind of frustrations with a new breakthrough technology and bring it to you into these markets. In order to bring you closer what zero emission means and what the whole background is and how we solve other issues as well, I want to hand you back to Claude, who tells you more about zero emission and what it means in total. Yeah, thank you, Thorsten, to give us a little bit hints, uh, show us a little bit the problems, the issues we face today on site. And we will go now together into our zero emission story. Of course, zero emission is a lot about fumes out of the petrol engines. And it is a story about the environment. But when we speak about fumes, it is also a story about health. And health brings us to safety on site. And MX Fuel, the zero emission story, is also a story of productivity and economic values. And here we will go now together a little bit deeper. I guess when we speak about zero emission, of course, we need to speak about the fumes out of the exhaust. And one story is definitely the particulate matter, SOx, NOx, and other substances. And here we hear a lot about legal issues, how the regulations will change. Even here in Germany, they speak about a speed limit on our motorway. Guys, could you imagine a speed limit on the German motorway? Yeah, this is one part of the story, but we need also to speak about carbon dioxide. And we all know carbon dioxide is the main reason for the global warming. And here definitely MX Fuel gives us a, of, a lot of opportunities to save carbon dioxide on site. The first example is our MX Fuel cutoff saw. Here we can save up to 335 kilograms of carbon dioxide per tool and year. Guys, again, per tool and year. From research, we know most of the companies, they use much more than one tool. They use 20, 25 tools within one company. 
So you could see the potential of savings here is really huge. On the other hand, when we speak about the breaker, with the breaker we can, uh, we can save up to 2.5 tons of carbon dioxide, again per tool and year. But the question now is very often, hmm, how much is this in comparison to something we know? And so we compared with the average white van, the typical truck a craftsman here in Europe use, and we asked them during our research how many, many kilometers they drive over the year, and the answer was quite simple, approximately 10,000. And this brings us a carbon dioxide footprint of 1.7 tons. So you can see, even with the light building equipment, the saving potential is really huge. And the reason is clear. Here we use small engines, we use two-stroke engines, and they don't burn perfect. And this brings us direct to the health topic. And when we speak about fumes and when we speak about health, there are two substances we need to understand. One behind me is benzene. Benzene definitely is, first of all, an alcohol. And it reacts in my body like every alcohol. I press it in, it goes in the blood, and I get a little bit drunken. And of course, I lose the fear of risks. And this is the moment when accidents could happen. And on top, Benzene could cause cancer, for example, leukemia and other diseases. The other one we need to speak about is carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide definitely is a huge problem on site. The reason is quite simple. On one hand, yes, it is toxic, but it is also heavier than air and it could fill a room or a trench really easily. And when it goes over the nose and there's no oxygen left, then the risk starts. I get a little bit of headache, get a little bit dizzy, and in the worst case, it could end in a sudden death. And this is the reason why we can't use petrol tools indoors or in trenches. And here, guys, MX Fuel gives us a lot of new opportunities where we can use the tools. For example, we can easily work indoors. On research in trenches, we saw people building exhausts out of the trench. Here with MX Fuel, no job on top, just cut, job done. We can use it in tunnels or mines without any issues. I guess this is the big benefit of using MX Fuel. Going a bit further into the health and safety aspect, we need to speak about tool safety. And here definitely we have two topics we need to understand. One is the hand arm syndrome or the white finger syndrome caused by vibrating tools. Because they block the blood flow in the fingers, my fingers could stuck and I couldn't hold the tool anymore. And this is a huge risk. And for this reason, definitely there's a limit line and the limit here in Europe is five meters per square seconds and working day, a worker should use the tool. And this is the reason why we reduced definitely the vibrations hard as we can. When we compare, for example, with the Hilti T3000, and this Hilti is definitely the most common breaker here in Europe, it comes with a vibrating level of seven meters per square second. In comparison, our MX fuel breaker comes only to 5.17 meters per square second. To give you an idea for the daily usage, the Hilti I can use approximately for five and a half hours. Our MX fuel breaker, I can use the whole day without any risk for the user. Okay, we need two coffee breaks and we fulfill all the regulations. And this brings us direct to the noise level. And guys, we all know noise causes stress and stress could cause a lot of other diseases. And this is the reason why we work really hard on the noise level, noise level on our machines. And here I have a comparison against a Husqvarna. We use here a Husqvarna petrol cutoff saw. It comes to a noise level of 105 dBA. In comparison, our MX fuel cutoff saw goes down to 89 dBA. And now you can ask, hmm, how much is this? To give you an idea, 105 dBA is the noise level of a starting aeroplane. In comparison, 89 is the noise level of a passing truck. So it is a huge difference. Or from a technical point of view, an increase of only 10 decibel, we hear as a double of the sound. So we can say a decrease of 16 decibel again is a really huge number. And guess this guides us now direct to the productivity. And the productivity story, we have here a video ready for you. We see Torsten in the video. And another colleague here from Europe, we see Manuel, both make the tool ready to use while Torsten is filling the tank. We have seen Manuel has finished the job, he changed the battery and he's ready to use. Yeah, Torsten, I'm a little bit sorry, but the winner is 
MX Fuel. So you see here, this is only a short part of the productivity story. And I promise you, we will go with every single tool deeper into this productivity story to show you here clearly the benefit. Yeah, Torsten is still working, huh? Ah, now he's ready and we can go on to the next slide. And this brings us now to the economic value. And guess we know all petrol tools produce a lot of ongoing costs. We need petrol filters, air filters, a lot of other spare parts. This is one part of the running costs on petrol tool. The other part is definitely the consumption of petrol. And here we compared a little bit the fuel costs of a Nissan Leaf, a pure electric car with a Toyota Hybrid. I think the best known hybrid car in the world. And when we compare the costs here, we can see, okay, Saudi Arabia, both costs the same. But in Saudi Arabia, petrol is nearly free. All other countries all over the world, we can see the pure electric car is much, much cheaper than even a good hybrid. For us, when we compare with our MX fuel tools, this means per cut of saw, per MX fuel cut of saw, we could save up to 240 euros per year in petrol costs. And for the breaker, it is unbelievable, 1,700 euros in petrol costs we can save. Yeah, guys, I think it was a little bit theory, and I think it's time to see the tools in action. I'm going to hand over to Thorsten, and we start with the Diamond Core Drill. Thank you, Claude, very much. Thank you for the introduction. So you see there's a lot of savings. Zero emission doesn't only mean petrol, but let's start with the tool. I have already one glove on, and we want to get our hands dirty, and we'll start with the Diamond Core Drill. But I think the question you have right now in your head and top of your mind is, can we really perform as the usual tool? And that's why we prepared another video. So let's start with that and look at the tool comparison of the Diamond Core Drill. You will see here Klaus, uh, one of our trainers, operating the direct competition, the Hilti DD150. So both machines have the same performance. Both machines can be used in the stand, like here, or even freehand. We equip both tools with the same core, so there is no difference. And we start drilling in the same time. One difference you will notice here is on the left hand side from me, you see already our M18 backpack sprayer. So we use here the synergy of the whole Milwaukee range using this backpack sprayer, setting it on the level of two of five levels it has, and I don't need to vary on, on the water flow. Conventional machines like Klaus are using it, they have mostly a hand operated pump. So you need to pump to three bars and look at the water flow. I talked a lot in this meantime, I hope you guys you paid attention to the video because you will see that there is still no difference in the way how fast we drill. So in that sense, 102 millimeters, we prove it. Milwaukee was able again to cut the cord and bring a corded performance on a cordless platform. So what we will see in a second, we let the guys drill for a little bit, is one feature what happens pretty often on the job sites and we made to prevent in this, this moment where Klaus core gets stuck. But this I will explain in the safety feature. So back to the studio and to another example on the performance, because you guys will have the question, how much can we do on one charge? So basically what you have set up here are four cores we did in C55 basement concrete of a seven year old hotel because they wanted to have a pool and invited us for test drilling. So when we look at this core, you will also see that we have four meshes of rebar in this core. So we have 76 millimeter in diameter, 24 centimeters of drilling depth on one battery charge. We did this coring, just repositioning the stand and core it at the same place. So here we would say user needs to reposition the stand. This took us 45 minutes. The charging time of the little battery of our CP pack is 45 minutes. So even when it comes to the performance side of business, the user will not miss the performance. Another point we heard is productivity. And there Claude did the very good example with me failing refueling the cutoff saw, but we have here a better example and I have chance to win this one. So in the next video, we will show you how we compare the setup of a diamond quadro. We have again Klaus and me with the same setup of machines. So we compare here again, direct competition. We already placed the anchor, uh, which will be normally an STS plus job. So both of us can set up the stand in the same time and start the job. Here, we don't see a big difference. So we will see that both have the setup time, both needs to bring the stand into position. This is currently the same time.
timing for both of us. It will get interesting the moment we bring the tools into position. Here Hilti has a clamp mechanism where you slide in the machine and you need to lock it. We use a 60 millimeter collar lock, a quick lock system. Uh, our machine has also a 60 millimeter neck, so it fits this stand as well as other stands in that sense. I have just one bolt I need to tighten, and that's how I fix the whole machine to the stand. So there are no additional tools needed to get this tool into position. And that's exactly where we now see the difference. Using the Milwaukee Synergies, I have the M18 backpack sprayer. I bring it into position. I already put it on gear two because then I have a nice milky consistency of the material that I wash out. Switch the backpack sprayer on and then switching on the tool, waiting until it comes to life and then going into switching it on, switching the water supply on and I can basically already start drilling. Klaus on the other side is still in the setup phase. He's not there yet to drill. So he needs to get the traditional hand pump I talked before, needs to get up to three bars to have a good water flow for the, uh, for the process, as well as the maximum of lifetime of machine and tool. But then he's still not finished because the moment he locks the tank and is ready with one part, he still needs to get the power source to the machine. And basically that's the moment where we go back to the studio and we can say until the moment Klaus comes back with the power source, plugs it in, tests the FE switch, I'm already done with a 24 centimeters drilling, coring job and I can continue to the next job. If you look at coring specialists in EMEA, this is exactly the time saving these guys want to have because sometimes they have one or two holes in one job site and need to move on to the next one. So here up to 152 millimeters we can core with this machine and this will enable especially coring specialists to save a lot of money because they are faster from job to job to job and get more jobs done. So to the tool here on my side. I will say some initial words to MX Fuel. We talk about light equipment, we talk about a new category. And basically what we see here is we need to start all the tools. So the first safety feature we will have on every MX tool is they need to be started and armed to get the job done. So when we switch this tool on, we will see it comes to life like any other cordless tool. And what I want to take you through is the speciality of the Quadro is this little cockpit we have on the backside. On the bottom, you see the one key light blinking so we can track and manage all MX Fuel tools and even the big battery. They are all one key enabled because we really see this as an asset and you can track and manage the position. The light, which comes later in the year, will be also be able to be customized. The next one blinking here is the battery gauge because when you fix the tool and the stand, you want to know if you can do the job, if you can finish the job, if you can finish the coring. And that's the moment where you lose this battery cage not the one in front of the battery, so you have an easy visibility of, can I get the next job done? We see a pressure gauge, therefore we prepared a video I'll show you in a minute. So we go over to this digital level. This is a feature which is only there with Milwaukee. If I drill horizontally, this digital level will guide me to have the perfectly straight hole. So here I have an easy indication for the user to get a perfect straight hole. And you can put aside chisel and hammer to adjust it. I talked about the pressure gauge and that's where we prepared the video and we go back into this competition we saw before between Klaus and me. For those guys who were wondering that we really like had the competition and I was staring at the machine. So I was looking at the cockpit and from the cockpit downwards on the core. So basically what we see here is a pressure gauge which gives me the perfect indication if I need to put more pressure or release some pressure in case I hit a rebar or have other resistance in the material. So here I have an improved lifetime of the tool and the accessory by using it properly and get the most of the, out of the lifetime there. So this is an improvement you will find from Milwaukee only. What we also have here on this tool is also to make coring easier for people who are not used to coring. We know plumbers need to core, electricians need to core, they give it to the specialist because they think there's a rocket science behind it. So what we did is instead of putting gear one, gear two, we used the casing and laser engraved the diameters directly on the case. In Imperial and Metric, you will find the traditional diameters here. You don't need to go back to the manual, figure out which gear is for which diameter. Speaking of diameter, we got the question in that basically, what is the reception? We have a quarter, one and a quarter inch reception outside and inside a half inch reception. So it's a standard reception. 
and we can use traditional cores which have this reception as well. So nothing special, we keep you going with what you have. Looking at the tool from another perspective, what we want to show you is safety features because coring, as I said in the beginning, is a big frustration as the safety. So what did we do different? The first thing, and here we have a video, is the industrial standard. We need to have a mechanical clutch in this tool. So what we have here, we go an extra mile. We go away from the sliding clutch, we will have a ratcheting clutch. Because the benefit of a ratchet is I have more points where it engages. So what you will see in a moment is how the clutch engages. There we go. And now we have a look in the casing and there we see the ratcheting clutch mechanism. What is the difference between the sliding clutch? Here with the ratcheting clutch, the user is not fighting with the machine. The user can still adjust the machine, maneuver it, and he gets a feedback from the machine. Especially when you drill in hollow blocks, like you have it in that example, or the red bricks. You have chambers wherever the core can get stuck. But in that moment, this ratcheting clutch gives you a feedback and the user can adjust. But we wouldn't be Milwaukee if we go the extra mile for our users when we promise safety. So we introduced with our SDS Maxima already the auto stop function. And with this diamond core, we go one level higher. So when we look in the next video, we will see how auto stop works. So basically we have a gyro sensor and this gyro sensor will activate and in the moment in the front is something stuck. So what you will see is the engaging light in the front, it blinks, it indicates, and that's the moment where the clutch adjusts or it get kicked in. A maximum degree of 15 degrees is what you will have as a user. So imagine you're standing on the ladder, imagine you're drilling on the ladder. This is the moment where Autostop got your back. We know as well that a tool, especially cordless tools, will have the best performance with the right accessory. So we have our standard course, which you can use, no problem with that. If you want to get the best performance out of your tool, we launch a new range of white cores, which are specially for cordless. Why? We try to show you together with the camera team. If we go closer here, we will see that the segment as such is thinner. So the diamond segment, we choose rougher material, we choose rougher diamonds, so we have the same lifetime, but the material itself got thinner. The body, the steel body, also got a little bit thinner. So we have not a lot of resistance for the core and get the max of the lifetime when we look at the coring machine. Behind me, you see the stand which we will launch with this tool. So basically, we will come with an insulated handle stand, very easy to set up. Again, 60 millimeter collar, so we can fit competitive machines as well as ours, or we can fit our machine to any other 60 millimeter holder. The other thing, I can use it with a vacuum pump, I can use it with an anchoring kit, so it is directly for every user available, what he needs to do, and with our heavy duty comp competence behind it. In that sense, I think we covered the first tool. Or are there more questions I didn't see? I have one, Torsten, okay. one important one. How many holes we can drill per battery charge? So that's what we had built up here. It's basically, again, C55 concrete, so very tough material. We have a 76 millimeter core here, and this we did with reinforced concrete before this question comes, and we did four holes in 45 minutes, which is exactly the charging time from the small battery. Thanks for the repetition, Claude. But now I think back to you and the cutoff saw. Back to the most expected tool in the training, <laughs> I was, I'm sure. Yeah, guys, welcome back. And we will go direct into the world's first 350 millimeter battery driven cutoff saw, which gives us the full experience of a petrol tool. So we have the full cutting depth of 125 millimeters. But guys, let's think a little bit about petrol again. If I use petrol on site, Definitely, I need a dedicated area where I can store it. And of course, I need to mix for my two-stroke engine, petrol and oil. And if I don't mix correct, I can easily break the engine. And then comes, for me, the most annoying part, definitely, to start the tool. Effectively, when it's cold, it is really hard to start. And soon as the tool runs, and here's where we go direct into the next video, we see the tool idling on the floor. Yeah, we can see here now the running tool. We can see how it starts moving on the ground. And guys, think a little bit. Here on the ground, it doesn't matter. But what happens if we work up on a scaffold and the tool crashes down? 
In the best case, definitely the tool breaks. In the worst case, one of my colleagues passing by. And I think this is the moment where we stop thinking about what could happen. Yeah, guys, this brings us but now to the most important question. What's about power? How powerful is the MX Fuel cutoff saw in comparison to petrol? And here we have direct the next video. And we see again Torsten and Manuel. Torsten use here a Husqvarna petrol. And Manuel is working with the MX Fuel tool. They work both on the same curbstone. We have seen they start to the same time. And I would bet they finish exactly to the same time. So it is 100%. Yeah, you see, it is virtually the same time. So we can say the power is definitely 100% the same as we know it from our petrol tools. But guys, power. What's about runtime? And runtime, I can tell you, this is exactly the curbstone we have seen at the moment cutting in the video. And on this curbstone, we do easily 24 cuts per charge. But we all know, a cutoff saw is also used in metal. And so I have another example here, a 100 millimeter steel pipe. And in this steel pipe, we do up to 22 cuts. And the third example, comes from civil engineering, a fresh water pipe. We see here an inner core of concrete and the outer core of steel cast. And this is definitely one of the hardest materials to cut. And even in this pipe with 100 millimeter diameter, we do 13 cuts per battery charge. So we can say for all these three examples, with one battery, we do enough for a full working day. And this brings us now to the next question. I promised you we will speak about productivity and here we have the next video. Yeah, we see again Torsten and Manuel. Torsten again on his petrol tool and the hand pump and we start. Torsten will start pumping, pumping, pumping. We know the story from Diamond Core Drill, of course. Three bars, we remember. And while Torsten is starting pulling the tool on, Manuel starts cutting and we could see Manuel nearly finished the job when Torsten even starts. Now you can say, okay, Claude, mm, this is not too much. This was maybe one, two minutes different. That's right. It was only two minutes difference. But what we know, especially when we cut something like this curb stones, we do this job several times over the day and calculating at the end of the day together, it comes to 20 to 30 minutes. And this is a huge amount again. Yeah, guys, I would say we go a little bit deeper into the saw. And again, it is the feeling of a petrol saw. So important, first of all, is when we check the safety guard in front, easy to adjust exactly to my daily needs. Going a little bit closer with the camera, we see here also the cover of the belt drive. So also our battery saw is belt driven like we know it from petrol. By the way, we see four screws on the cover easy to open and we can tighten the belt again or maybe once a year I need to change the belt. Going further on the saw we see here a quick water connection, a simple water connection, just click it on, job done and behind the water connection we see directly the display for one key. Going a little bit on top of the saw in the back, we remember from Torsten's pitch we have the on off switch every MX fuel tool again we need to switch on switch off and direct above we see the fuel indicator for the battery and checking the front comes for me a little bit of surprise when i was on research with the tool one of the most comments i had from the end users we see here a tool storage for the disc change or the tightening of the belt both tools are stored directly on the tool and this was something everyone recommended and said hey this is something we don't know we have never seen before on petrol all the suppliers of petrol tools Husqvarna, Stiel, whoever they always supply us with a bag with the tools in and we all know this bag is everywhere but not beside the tool so yeah a small but important benefit here and this brings us last but not least to the front and we see the arbor for the disc here it is again a standard chuck Pretty much the same as our competitors use, but we are Milwaukee. We make everything a little bit better. We have here 
a two disc system so we can use both common disc 25.4 millimeter and a 30 millimeter hole so every disc in the market fits on the tool yeah guys this is a quick one about the tool but we know also a perfect match means always the best tool needs the best accessory and i would say this is the moment for our next video Again, we see Torsten and Manuel in the video, and now we see similar saws, both use now a MX Fuel cutoff saw. Ready to use, both comes with bonded discs, and the pipe we use here, you remember the blue color? Yeah, we use here this ductile pipe with concrete and steel cast from Civil Engineering, and we can see both starts side by side, and we can directly see Manuel is much, much faster than Torsten. Yeah, maybe Torsten was a bit tired, could be one of the reasons, or Manuel has a bit more experience, could be one of the reasons, but I don't think these are the reasons. I think Tosten is always motivated to win a race. I try, I give my best. <laughs> yeah, guys, so the question is now, and you can see it is a huge difference. And guys, the question now is quite simple. What is the difference? And here I think we can leave the video, we go back to the studio, and I have the two discs here. And on the first view, they look 100% the same. But the big difference is, Torsten used here the metal disc, while we had on Manuel's cutoff saw the ductile disc. And guess you could see here now, the correct disc makes a huge difference. On one hand, of course, in performance, I finish the job faster. But on the other hand, important to remember, I get more runtime out of the battery. And this is one of the reasons why we speak about perfect match between battery and accessory. We have now seen metal cutting. I have here a second video for you in metal cutting. We will see our steelhead, a diamond disc, again in action. You see now again two MX fuel tool, uh, fuel cutoff saws, both ready to use. One equipped with the steelhead blade, one equipped with a standard metal blade. The pipe we use here, by the way, is again the pipe we have seen before, the 100 millimeter steel pipe. And we could see the diamond disc produce less sparks, important less, yeah? And it is definitely faster than the bonded disc. Going a little bit deeper into the steel head, important here is we use a milled surface on both sides, so we have a perfect run through the material without developing too much sound and less friction for a long run time of the battery. We see the holes and the bore, uh, we see the holes and slots outside of the disc. This is always important when the disc heats up, so it could expand a little bit without producing a heavy sound. And we use a perfect amount of diamonds on the border for fast and efficient cut. But guys, we sh I'm sure we all agree, diamond discs in metal is one part of the stories for diamond disc. But we need also to speak about discs we use in masonry and concrete. And here I will hand over to Thorsten again. Thank you, Claude. So concrete, one of my specialities, and I want to take you through the accessories we launch with the machine. We will don't leave you. We want to deliver to you like the perfect system. So basically, when you buy this machine, you will get it with one battery, one charger, and the first black disc here, the DUH diamond universal hard material disc so you have a plug and play solution where you can go in any hard material in any abrasive material you have a multi material disc in that sense but we know a lot of users and depending on their application they have very dedicated and special blades that's why we have the speed cross range and the one in the middle here you have for stone material is the AUDD so abrasive universal diamond disc. So this is for very abrasive materials, as it says, for all the stones, the red stones here behind me, the white stones. So it's for all these kind of materials, which are very hard on any diamond segment. If we now face users who have a lot of natural stone, who cut a lot concrete with rebar, there we go with a really tough mid blade. Here we have the HUDD. This blade is specialized for hard universal diamond disc. So here we have really natural stones, rebars, concrete, these are areas where you, where you use this blade. This is from the accessory range, so we know like a whole range of, of tools. We have a whole range of accessories, six of the accessories, but we also have system attachments. So what we see here directly in front of me is a cutoff saw card and how you set up this cutoff saw card, there we prepared a video to show you the exact details. 
So now looking in the video, what you will see, runtime is one question. So we have the second battery st uh, storage here, so we can do up to three meter cuts and even longer. To fit the tool, I just unleash these two latches, it folds open, I grab the tool and I place it inside. It's made for our tool, for our handle, so no competitive machine fits in there. Again, we just close this holder, we close the two latches, there are no additional bolts, so very quick and easy solution how you adjust or how you bring the uh, tool in there. Safety first, the battery was not on, so now we slide the second battery on the tool itself and fix the water tank. This water tank is in the delivery content, so we have a gravity water tank with 11 liters, also two latches, click it on and it's good to go. In order to start it, we now will start the tool, so it starts, goes on, is armed, then we connect the water connection because we want to have the water flow for cutting, open the water valve, and then it's like a lawnmower, you guys know, press one button, push the angle, and you're good to go. In order to dive into the material, basically use this little red handle, grab it, put it down, and then you can already plunge into the material. You will always have the full plunge capacity, blade capacity of 125 millimeters cutting depth. What you will also find in your delivery content is this little boy here, this black metal piece. This is to enable you to use our backpack sprayer. So what you see here in the setup in front of me is already equipped the backpack sprayer. Here we already had the question, there are five gears. We recommend gear two to uh, use the right pressure here for this application. So you plug it in and you have 15 liters and a constant water flow, not like a gravity tank where the less water, the less pressure. So here we have a perfect solution with this clamp already embedded. That's the closing words for the cutoff saw and the system attachments. The cutoff saw card is separately available for these guys who need it for extreme precise long cuts. Let's go to the last tool. Let's talk about demolition hammers. So we get rid of the card a little bit and we prepared a video to show you the issues and frustrations we face with demolition hammers. So when we look here at uh, the normal hammers, the first thing is pneumatic hammers and there is the starting of a tool. So we have the noise level, we have the exhaust, we have a lot of setup with this generator. Petrol hammers like this one, they have the exhaust pipe directly in your face. So basically you will have always the issue with the petrol solution. When we look at corded hammers, you have the problem of bringing the cord into position. You will have the issue of placing the cord and then also like finding a power source. Tripping breakers is a big topic because you're not the only hammer running on a job site. So if there's another tool plugged in, if there's another thing running, it can happen that your uh, electronic hammer doesn't deliver the performance it used to have because there's something else plugged in. So this is all the frustration we face beside cable, cables, tripping hazards, etc. And how does the solution look like? Yeah? We prepared for you here also a performance comparison because we want to show you that a cordless hammer can bring the same performance as the spoken corded hammer. So let's watch this movie and have a look at what we did in front of the training center. We have here the setup of the main competitors. We have Claude operating the demolition hammer. He wants to be part of our races. Then I want to win one time. <laughs> <laughs> then we have our Bosch hammer here, uh, operated from Manuel. And then the Dewalt hammer I was operating. And then the last one in the middle, most experienced market leader, the Hilti TE3000. And everybody starts shizzling at the same time. Using 64 joules of power, 1,300 beats per minute, uh, we can really keep up even with the market leader and deliver a performance which will not let the end user miss the cord. So what you see here, we can break with this demolition hammer up to two tons of concrete on one XC battery charge. So you really see like big bricks are coming off, Claude is winning the race, and we will have a solution which is suitable for the user needs. In that sense, performance is one thing we need to talk about. Performance literally is also the next video what we want to show you is from Monaco. We had a trench build up so it's 30 centimeters wide, 20 centimeters deep and we will see this is all one battery charge we did here. This is a typical plumbing and electrical application up to 12 meters we did on one XC battery. So when we look literally at performance runtime we will have that what the user needs on the job site and he will not miss the cordless tool. He can use it inside, he 
can use it wherever he wants. He has a solution which is different than anything he found before. Looking at the demolition hammers, we also save setup times, etc. This is not a point, big point of discussion, but I think we look now into the tool. We have the tool here in front of me on the trolley. So what we will see there, again, a starting button here on the top with the one key light. This one key light will also engage in a yellow blinking light after 80 hours of trigger time. 80 hours of trigger time in, uh, is the reason why you need to re-grease the machine. So we enable you here to do the greasing on your own to make always sure that you have the right performance of your tool there when you need it. What you see here is already set it up with the trolley together, the demolition hammer. But what we want to highlight, you have a stretch band so you can store it with the battery on the tool or as is this here without the battery. But another point we need to mention at that place is vibration. So what we want to show you right now, how we ch uh, chase vibration, we show you a video about the competition tools. So what you see here on the video is basically that the competition is having the handles as a vibration, anti-vibration mechanism. So this uses half the issue that the hands are vibrating. Watch their arms, watch how the vibration is giving pass to the user. So imagine now this hammer is falling down one time and hits the handle. On the other side, Claude has no issue with this because the mechanism is a different one. How does the mechanism in Milwaukee cases work like? And there we have another video. We open the housing. We show you the mechanism in that sense. So when we go into the machine, we will see two swiveling arms. So the engine is totally disconnected from the user, from the housing. And on top, we have a spring. And this brings us the 5.17 meters per square second and also enables us to have the two coffee breaks Claude was talking about and a full working day with this tool. And we wouldn't be Milwaukee if we don't go into deep with the user, have discussion, speak to them, and we heard transportation is one issue. Transportation of the tool itself, so I'm not talking about the trolley. So what did we do different? And I will take this buddy here out. We have a handle embedded, which is so placed that we perfectly can carry this hammer in balance so if I need to go up staircases, if I need to carry it on the job site, I have a perfect solution, well-balanced hammer, and get the job done. No cord I need to drag over my shoulder or around the tool, or I can really trip over it. So here we have a clean solution. Here we have something which is different to anything you find in the market. I dropped this bad boy down. Let's have a look at a system attachment. So what we have standing here is our trolley. The main features are happening on the back. So when we talk about transportation, we have the big wheels, which we already used the experience of pack out. So we have a perfect wheels to get it up and down stairs into the trailer, off the trailer, be mobile, even in rough terrain. If you need to slide it down from certain areas, we have here these two sliding handles. We have really like smooth transportation so we can slide it down certain areas from a pickup truck or even from staircases if we need to. And then we see directly the only corded tool of the MX Fuel range, which is our charger, where the cord is safely stored, and it is a second battery storage. So even if I need more runtime, if I have 24 meters of trench, I can store a second battery on the tool itself. No tool is operating without accessory. So we have four slots for four different chisels. So here the user will have the option to use our Milwaukee chisels it's a standard 28 millimeter hex reception, so it fits any competition machine. If you have 28 millimeter hex chisels in your range as a user, which have a ring, we got your back covered. The tool can also receive this kind of chisels. Made in Germany, we offer you a whole range of chisels, which is built up here behind me. Additionally, we also have tampering plates. So here we bring you the performance, the lifetime you expect from this tool and make your lifetime your work on the job site way easier because we are Milwaukee, we are out there with you as a user and we care about your problems. In that sense, there's just one question left open we really need to discuss and we need to have a deep dive and Claude is already ready to explain it to you is how do we deliver the performance? How do we get there that a cordless tool is performing as petrol competition, corded competition and even pneumatic competition? So Claude, back to you and show us the insights. Yeah, guys, let us go a little bit inside the technology of our MX Fuel tools. 
And here definitely we need to speak about our red lithium ion battery. For the battery on Amix Fuel we use our brand new 21700 cell. And the two benefits of this cell or two benefits to remember on these cells are it works down to minus 28 degrees Celsius. So we can use it even in the far north of Europe. And very important for Amix Fuel it, could ha it has a really low cell impedance. This means there's a really low resistance inside the cell. So it could deliver really high currencies. Exactly the currencies we need for our MX fuel tools. All the cells we use here, we connect serial within one frame. And I think this is something we know already from our M18 packs. An extra frame, an inner frame for the cells. So in case the battery crashes down, it is absolute, absolutely durable and will last a long time. This is the 3 amp pack with 216 watt hours. And we come now to the 6 amp packs. And here we can calculate together 216, 432 watt hours on our big pack, which produce, by the way, similar, a similar power to petrol of 5 horsepower. We connect two of these inner layers together. Both goes now in the outer housing, which we can see here. Again, a really durable housing for harsh job site conditions. And as we know it from Milwaukee, again, a large rubber over molding. So it doesn't slip away even on fragile surfaces like my table here. And now we move a little bit from the battery to the tool. And this brings us direct to the red link electronic. And we remember guys, there are really high currencies flowing. And of course, this could produce a lot of heat. In the worst case, a tool could overheat. Never ever a MX tool. The reason is we see the large heat sinks here, which cools the electronic down and it makes and, and makes ensure we can train the battery completely without overheating the tool. Also, when we speak about job site conditions, we all know there's a lot of water and dust around. And so we covered all the electronics again, make them dust and water protected. This is the Red Link electronic like we use it in our tools. And now we move to the herd of the tool. We move to our power state brushless motor. What I have here now is the frame of the motor, an 80 millimeter frame, fully packed with copper. And of course we use on the other side an hour again, fully packed with rear earth magnets, putting them together and you could really see the power Guys, this is the heart for our MX fuel tools. And this was a quick overview on the technology in total. And I would say, Thorsten, we use the last couple of minutes we have left here and we go a little bit deeper into your questions. So let's make sure that you don't come too close. You don't want to have any one, issues. One, huh? I, now I can kick you back. Yeah. So now we're safe. So yeah, yeah. you're in your technology corner. I have the tools. I'm happy. So. We have some questions coming into the studio. I think Claude is reading them out and then yep. we basically try to answer them uh, to you guys. Okay, I used the first one. Hey, it comes from my friend Anwar in Saudi. Hi Anwar, hope you are doing well. One question is, does the coring machine have a protection for water leakage in case of overhead drilling? So basically this overhead drilling using water we cover with the accessories to the stand. So the stand will have a water collection ring so in the sense you drill upwards into the ceiling, you will have this water collection ring in place and a vacuum in order to get all the water out. So that's an accessory from the stand. Yep. And yes, Anwar, these are all definitely, these are all brushless tools. Hey, Thorsten, can yeah. the core drill use any cores in the market? Yes, as long as you have a one and a quarter inch male reception or a half inch uh, female reception, you can put any core on this machine. There were nothing special. Again, we just recommend our white cores are developed with a partner together to bring you the best performance of a cordless tool. But if you have existing cores, don't be afraid to use them. They are good to go. Yeah, Thorsten, one question goes back. I think you mentioned it, but important to say it again. Which level on the switch tank do you recommend together with the diamond core drill? Okay. So when we use a diamond core drill with the backpack sprayer, we basically have five possible levels we can adjust. But in, what we need is a milky water consistency, which is coming out of the tool, because then we used, we free the diamonds really and remove the segment. And this we achieve if we use gear two on the, on the backpack sprayer. So gear two, diamond coring, 
perfect application. Okay, this brings us direct to the next question. How long does the batteries take to charge? So the little battery we will have here, which will be launched in September with us, this will be charged in 45 minutes. If you look at the big ICSI battery here, Claude, there we have like 90 minutes of charging time. So nothing which is out of space, which is really like also fitting the applications. Okay, and this brings us for asphalt cutting. What is the maximum cutting depth? Talking about the uh, cutoff saw here, we have a maximum cutting depth of 125 millimeters. This maximum cutting depth you also have using the cutoff saw card. So both times 125 millimeters. Yeah. If I use it for asphalt, do we have a special blade for asphalt? We have it not yet in the range. So within the accessories I showed you, we don't have a specialized asphalt blade. The only thing we can recommend if you stay to Milwaukee is the abrasive blade, but we are working on a specialized asphalt blade. Yeah. And I don't see any more questions. So, guys, yeah. Now, I want to do something. <laughs> I want to give you a little bit an outlook what is coming next. Yeah, and on the picture here, guys, we see now an outlook a little bit into the future. We see the three tools we have seen today. We see the cutoff saw, the breaker, and the diamond core drill. And later this year, we will launch also our sewer drum machine and our construction light. For both tools, we will have a webinar a bit later in the year. Hey, Thorsten, where are you? I just keep safety distance from you. So you push me away. I'm staying here. I'm staying safe. I don't get into this trap. <laughs> okay. And I would say thank you very much, guys. And hopefully see you next time here. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah. Thank you also from my side. And also thanks to all the people supporting here. We have a lot of guys on the cameras. We have a lot of guys in the back end answering your chat questions. So also thanks to this, guys. Thanks for participating and have a lovely day. We are happy to bring MX Fuel to you. Thank you, guys. Wow.